Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, building experiences that connect, remove friction, and deliver insights. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Ed Kless, and with me today is Laurent Charpentier. Laurent received his Bachelor of Science in Electrical Air Engineering and Computer Science from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and his Master's of Science in Electrical Engineering in Lyon. Prior to joining USE, Laurent spent, served as the Solution Lead Architect and Security Lead Consultant for Accenture and was a Business Analyst for Dell. Since 2016, he has been the USE North American COO and CIO and became the USE CEO in 2022 to lead the next growth momentum for use. Welcome to the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast, Laurent. Thank you, Ed. It's a pleasure to be here today. Well, first off, Laurent, tell me, why do you do what you do? Well, you know, I, I really like, or more than like, love the, the potential of, of building something very unique. Uh, and of course, all the challenges that, that, that come with it. Um, and, and more importantly for me, it's, it's about having fun along the way, working with a, a team of smart and talented people that that have the same values, that value the same culture, the same team spirit uh, as I do, and, and really bring that and create that uh, in, in our organization. And, and this is something we're really proud of uh, at Hughes because we've been able to uh, to build a team along along this. And, and as we grow, make sure we maintain that, that culture and, and those values. Well, talk to me a little bit about this, this uh, phrase, cloud P2P automation. What does that mean? Yes, so uh, P2P stands for Purchase to Payment Automation, and uh, our our uh, our motto is uh, Use is uh, the smartest, most powerful, and easiest to use cloud purchase to pay automation solution out there for the the, the mid market. So essentially, this means that we can automate and help our customers generate a lot of benefits and and savings the entire purchase to payment process for the the mean market which is our, our sweet spot so this means that our clients can really start their purchase request in our system or in their ERPs and we 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 get that data into into our platform and from there go through the entire process you know you purchase something you get an invoice uh, our DNA comes from document understandings with uh, artificial intelligence and, and machine learning approaches so that we capture all those incoming invoices from those different purchases in real time with no human outsourcing behind the scenes. It's pure technology. And we have a, a very cool workflow to really help our customers, help our users make their life simple when it comes to uh, coding those invoices, make sure they're approved by the right stakeholders, and all the way through the payment approval and payment execution of those invoices. And we bring a lot of uh, uh, soft and hard savings uh, when it comes to, to, to the benefits. Time saved, a lot of dollars generated uh, back into, uh, into the process with cash back from the payments. Uh, and we try to make our users happy and their life better. Well, talk a little bit about that. Is there any specific use cases that you can share with me where you, you know, had some real customer success with, with, with using the product? Yeah, if you come to my mind, uh, I think the uh, one of our very first uh, first ones in probably 16 or 17 was uh, actually a, an automotive dealership where they had rooms full of filing cabinets and paper. And uh, within a few a few months, it probably took them about three, four, or five weeks to get to get up and running with with our product. And within a few months, they were able to completely uh, become paperless. And get rid of all those those file cabinets. So that's uh, that's that's one one use case uh, that that we've seen that they kind of mark mark my mind a little bit because I actually visited them on site and saw those rooms full of paper, and we really taken them to to something much more automated, much more efficient, and, and no more paper. Um, another use case that that also uh, struck me was uh, actually a a, a restaurant. Uh, chain. They they had about 20 locations. It was a franchise, uh, and they were running around with paper everywhere as well. They were losing ton of time. They were losing documents, and the amount of hours that we saved them, I I would have to retrieve the exact number, was was just uh, extraordinary. And uh, we we created a lot of a lot more buying into the the accounts payable process. They were able to grow. Uh, very fast without adding more FTEs on their accounting team and uh, and with a much more 
much stronger process, much more visibility, the real-time data to make better decisions. And I think that's a really important point, especially with regard to you bring uh, artificial intelligence into it too. It's not that it's not that jobs go away. It's just that the tasks that people do in those jobs change. And like you said, you don't have to expand. You don't have to add FTE, but it's not about getting rid of people so much. Absolutely. And then we really value this approach. We want to help, you know, we want to take the, the tedious tasks from uh, from people and, and, and create more added value tasks that they can actually contribute to. So in our case, when we take away a lot of the data entry uh, from uh, from those invoices that were manually keyed into, uh, into the accounting system, now those people can focus on uh, creating better relationship with the vendors, negotiating early payment discounts, uh, helping bring more, more uh, real-time data into the entire organization because accounts payable actually touches the entire organization when you have all your department managers that have to actually approve those invoices, make sure those vendor gets paid. This is this touches everyone in the organization. So AP can become much more central, much more strategic, and, and this creates more and more value for, for the different stakeholders within the accounting team. Let me ask you a more theoretical question. You said you've used built-in uh, artificial intelligence into your product, and there's been an explosion, really, in the capabilities of artificial intelligence. Do you think that that's gonna, that is going to continue along this this expo- uh, high growth hockey stick trend line, or uh, have have we hit perhaps a peak, and we're going to have to maybe re- rethink some of this stuff? Um, I, I I think we've we've hit a point. I wouldn't say we've hit a peak where it's going to slow down. Really, I think we've hit a, maybe a, a peak where there are more questions that are being asked around, you know, what is what is what is safe? Where where is it going to take us? And and maybe more questions about okay, what what data? Or how much how much freedom do we give to do we give to AI? Uh, so I think I think there are more thoughts around this. I don't see the the the, the trend for leveraging and using AI slowing down because I think there are so many companies out there that can benefit from it. And again. Without replacing people, just by 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 augmenting what can be done, do, doing it more efficiently with with more added value. So, I think we uh, we're not going to see a slowdown, but but maybe more more cautiousness about how we approach this, especially with the latest technologies out there. I'm sure you've, you've played with ChatGPT, maybe, and it's it's pretty impressive what <laughs> some of those tools can do, right? So. And we have an exit question, Laurent, that we ask all of our question, guests, and that is, who is a hero of yours, and why are they a hero? <laughs> so I, it was a hard question for me, and I, I, I have kind of two answers. Uh, on a more personal note, I'm, I'm going to say my wife, because I couldn't do what I do at Hughes uh, without her. And, uh, and you know, it's a, it's a family organization, and, and so uh, without her, I, I wouldn't be where I'm, where I'm at today. So uh, that's going to be the, my personal hero. Uh, on a more professional note, uh, without having a specific name in mind, I, I really admire all the self-made entrepreneurs who have built something from the ground up and uh, and have done it with with you know a successful team around them. So this, uh, without citing a specific name, there are a lot of success stories out there. This this those are people I really uh, enjoy meeting and and learning from. And lastly, Laurent, how can somebody contact you? So while we're at the Sage Summit, uh, you should visit our booth booth. 424. And after the summit, I think the best is just through our, our website, uh, getuse.com, or uh, through uh, the email address, contact at us.getuse.com. Uh, and, uh, and that way you can, you can find me. All right. Laurent Charpentier, CEO of Use. Thanks so much for being a guest on the Sage Thought Leadership Podcast. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Ed. Review and subscribe by searching your podcast player of choice for Sage Thought Leadership Podcast.